Hello, I'm John Ombler, the Acting Chief Executive of CERA, joined today by Matt Clark from our operations team. We're here today in the um, residential red zone, not far from the Avon Loop, the Avon River just behind me. And um, over the last few years, of course, we've had uh, parts of the, the flat land of Christchurch declared as a residential red zone, part of the Port Hills also declared as a red zone. There's been something close to um, 8,000 properties now sold to the Crown uh, through that process so that people have an opportunity to move on with their lives. Of course, it was all zoned red for a good reason. Either there'd been significant damage to the land here in the, uh, the flat land, the residential red zone, or there was a susceptibility for future damage. And in the case of the Port Hills, there was a, a significant life risk um, identified. That's the reason for it. And um, there's now been a huge amount of progress, and as you can see here, it doesn't look like a demolition zone. And Matt, you and your team have had a very interesting few years. We tell did. us tell us about the progress. Well, where we are now, we've come a long way in the last four years, John. We, uh, we started with a blank slate back in 2012, early 2012, and we had uh, in front of us potential of about 7,000 properties that yep. were going to be acquired by the Crown. And, uh, and then go through the process to clear them and restore the land to an open space. So we didn't really know what that looked like, how we would do it, what we needed. Um, mm -hmm. So very early on we formed together with um, a group of other agencies, uh, stakeholders, community groups and, uh, and we worked out how we might do this thing. Mm -hmm. So we've we pulled together a four, four part process and the, four, the first part is property by property we need to go and complete the demolition. Yes. Um, and you can imagine every property has its own issues. Um, every property has to be assessed, the damage needs to be determined uh, for EQC and private insurance assessment. Yes. Uh, they have their own contaminated land issues potentially, um, asbestos issues that we have to resolve uh, and every single property has to be dealt with as a one off. And then once that's done, we can go through and do the demolition yeah. or the relocation. Yeah. So, so you know, a large number have been demolished. Um, some translocated. So, how many have been picked up and moved on? So, of the uh, just over seven thousand that have been yeah. cleared, approximately five hundred have been yes. relocated. Yes. So they've been picked up. Um, they strip the cladding off them. They prepare them. They put them on the back of a truck and take them out and yeah. relocate them. Yeah. So, so that's that's pretty successful. Um, We've tried to enable that as much as we can. Yes. Uh, we've got to a point in the process we have less than 30 properties left to go. Uh, nine of those are relocations and we're just working yes. with those owners to get those yeah. finally over the line yes. uh, to, to make sure we can get the land cleared and back into this sort of state here. And, and when we say that we're talking about the flatlands? Just the, the flatlands. The flatlands, really. the yeah. flatlands which is uh, roughly 500 hectares of crown owned land. Yes. Um, includes the sort of Avon corridor, yes. uh, northern some northern areas out near Brooklyn's uh, Kaipoi, Karaki and Pines yes. Beach. Yes, and of course a lot of that land is now like this, um, so once you've removed the houses, um, how have you then gone to get it to this state, which, which looks lovely, and, and how's it now being managed? Yeah, good question John. The most complex part was the demolition, property by property, multiplied by 7,000 with multiple insurers coming into the play. Uh, once we get all those houses gone, we've, we're left with more of an open space that we yeah. can work with. So what we do is we go in with a round of residual structures, so yeah. we go through and remove, there's leftover fences, um, parts of driveways, uh, there's material buried under the ground, landscape material etc. Mm. So we'll remove that, um, we assess and identify all the vegetation and all the trees, mm -hmm. yeah. and so far we have uh, assessed through arborists over 30,000 trees. Uh, mm -hmm. for retention and mark yep. those in the GPS and yes. of those about 60% are natives Yes. so we do that process and then we come through um, we basically do some low level cultivation smooth out the humps and the hollows and generally we'll apply a treatment which is grassing in some areas where it's wetter it might be a, a wetland type treatment or in some areas near the beach it would be a planting dune type plants yeah. so consistent with the environment yeah. that's there Yes, well, what, what that's done of course um, when you look around here now and further down through the the, the, the uh, residential red zone, you can start to think about future use, because you can see what the land looks like. Um, I, personally, I found it quite difficult to think about future use at the time that there were um, houses still um, all over the all over the the uh, the, the properties. Um, so um, that's of course one of the next steps which um, we're going to be dealing with with the community of. Uh, Christchurch over the next few years. It's already happening in Waimakariri, uh, looking at future use. 
Um, but as you look around, um, uh, you know, your, your mind must, you know, flourish with ideas, and I guess that must be happening across all of your team and and the community that you're you're working with. Well, I think it's the number one question that anybody asks is, so what's going to happen next? Yeah. And um, and when is that process going to start? Yeah. So I know things are underway, and yeah. we should get that um, that process moving shortly. In the meantime, our role has been to get the land into yes. a state where it's easy to maintain, um, it's nice and open, and it's ready for those future use decisions to be made. Yes, that's fantastic, and what you and your team have done, getting it, not only you know, getting through all of this exercise safely, but methodically, quickly, and getting getting the land like this so that it's it's pleasant to look at and you're able to think of those futures yes. is, is just tremendous and well done. Oh, good. Well, thank you, John. Pass on to the team. Well thank done. Thank you. Um, I've got a very committed bunch of uh, individuals on the team yeah. and uh, also on the extended team with the contractors. Yes. Um, I was just going to say, managers, the, the, yeah, the team just isn't just Sarah. It's a whole, a whole family of contractors. Yeah. So everybody's yeah. pulled together really well. Yeah. Um, so it's a really good success story of cross-agency cooperation. Mm. Um, we work closely with the councils, um, with the police, with the fire service, um, Land Information New Zealand, ECAN. Uh, everybody has pulled together really well and we're focused on how to get it done and we've got it done. Well done. And Thank not too many to go, 30. 30 left. 30 in the flatlands and, flat and a few more on the hills. Yeah, a few more there. Yeah, yeah. A bit more tricky up there. It's challenging and yeah. um, I'm happy for people to uh, take that quietly. Yeah, yeah. Very good. And um, so stories like the one you've been listening to and many others will be in the future Christchurch update which will be delivered into mailboxes this coming weekend. Thanks for joining us.